Hej ni Rauf. Hej Så jag hade some audio issues before and I had to reconnect something. Hej Sami. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, yes. Hey, Happy New Year, team. Hello. Happy New Year, family. I will be off at a month phone. I will be famous to go back and join from my office. Ah, okay. So are we going to go through the Nirav's uh, update today, Panos? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I, I'm just You're, driving uh, back, so it need, I need to just a 10-15 minutes to get to my office room. And, yeah. yeah that's I did notice that your network is intermittent, so yeah, uh -huh. better, a better connection there. Okay. So should I mark that in the agenda? I did not have it. So, Panas, regarding the uh, work group uh, goals uh, right up, uh, we are good there, right? So, yes, uh, I started these two do documents, one for the agenda for 2024, the one we're running now. I'm actually searching for my tab here to start typing things down okay. and meeting notes as well. And okay. another one, 2023, where I try to put down meetings we had uh, since the global summit after the global right. summit uh, for reference uh, we can go and edit those uh, if needed also i noticed i i set the meetings up to uh, june and mm -hmm. i noticed that now there is an ics file so we can click there and put it in our calendars because the previous oh, time we, we did not have the ics file right okay uh, but was a bit awkward so I suppose we're good there. Also, I did add a line in the wiki uh, mm -hmm. with a draft notice about the thing we discussed last time uh, about uh, fleet management product to right, be right. some of our goals or you know, uh, pursues. So we can we can discuss that today. How do we can we phrase that? Right, right. And I saw some somebody, I don't know, a person who uh, John was saying, somebody saying, like, uh, subscribed uh, um, for the CSM 
networking. We do have several subscriptions, and I think I saw that. Uh, like I, I sent the new meeting invite with like a noisy way with notifications turned. So it may be that we, you know, we poke at more people now because we have many subscribers in the group, and we would very like to see them joining. You know, at least once to see uh, they're attending to it, right? Yeah. This, yeah. To have some attendance, so like you know, get to meet them, uh, hear the, them, hear us, and uh, find how we can proceed and collaborate. Maybe I think for the next meeting we should uh, schedule or uh, put our agenda and say like here is uh, things we want to discuss, and the uh, people who are interested, in the we want to request them to join. Especially I suppose like we need to be, fleet management yes. side. We should be more specific and put mm -hmm. down an item in the agenda of um, like an open day for the group for people mm -hmm. to participate and um, learn what we have done so far. Like see uh, yet another presentation of our uh, group introduction of our group because we have been conducting so many. Uh, meetings with a set team, but now that we have more people interested, perhaps it's uh, a chance to recap and reiterate on what we're doing here. Right. right. Hi, Scott. Hey, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Hi, Scott. Hi, Jerry. Hi. I do notice that uh, Nira was still not connected. So, uh, uh, yeah, if you, okay. If, uh, Are you? Unless you have <laughs> another item on the agenda, do, do you have another item on the agenda or is this the only item? Uh, we do have any opens and the discussion about fleet uh, management, like how do we want to approach this? Uh, if you don't mind starting with that, I'll be there in like three minutes. Okay, okay, no worries. No worries. Just let me find the agenda documents once more. So, uh, just to... uh, okay, here we are. So, um, the agenda items read as open status for publications, a roadmap for 2024, and the driving the work to build a fleet management solution for OCP, call for participation, scope of the work, like anything that we need to uh, make concrete around this subject. So I will start that on my end. Uh, I don't have any status update for the publication. There is still some... Um, workflow procedure not even legal that we need to do on our end to clear it and give it a green light uh, for the telemetry data sharing model um that's the only thing uh i remember that uh, george had um, um had asked for a little more time to look at uh, john's comments on the ima document um and then we can go with uh, with the others I don't know what's the status there. 
And on the second item, no, that's the status of publication. I don't know if we have any other opens. Any other comments? Perhaps you, Sami. So, Sami, I had a question. Um, I know there was a team within Intel that was trying to understand more about uh, IMA. Did that already happen? Yeah, so that's uh, their plan to bring a contribution to IMA. Yeah. Yes. They will bring the proposal for uh, us to review. I see. Then I can think of inbound telemetry, right? Uh, but all the EMA related work. Uh, all the agents and the security, all those things, we they assume it is solved by our IMA proposal. So that's where we need to get a judge come in and a, uh, say whether are we are we ready to kind of uh, say the red face profiles think... that we have, we can take it and are we good to create a product, right? Understood. Thanks. Okay, I'm. I'll be there. And I'll, I'll be joining in one minute. Sorry about this. No problem. No problem. We can wait. I'm also back to office now. <laughs> Maybe while we are waiting, maybe do you want to get Jerry introduced? Oh yes, that that would be that would be nice if you can hear from you, Jerry. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Jerry Chen, and uh, um, I'm a program manager of um, Inventech. Um, our company is uh, um, uh, the manufacturing uh, for the um, server and switch. Yeah, I joined this group uh, to learn uh, something and uh, hopefully I can bring the knowledge back to our team. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the group. Thanks. Okay, I'll be ready in a second. Uh, just network issues. Uh, my computer is stuck. <laughs> if everything goes wrong today. Uh, uh, okay, join from browser, I guess. Also, we have another new member, Jim Hartford. Hello. Hi, Jim. This meeting is being recorded. So I'm from Broadcom. Hi, Jim. Welcome. Welcome. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oops. Yeah, you may need to reduce your speaker because we're getting oh. some echo here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it was because of my phone joining, but now not okay. okay. Okay, let me present. Oh, yeah. That's clear now. Okay. So I don't know if you can see my tab. I can see it. Okay, okay. So the paper is in the, I guess it's in, still in that CSM core 2023 global summit folder. Um, it's, uh, I can move it to another location. Uh, I think we were originally planning it for the 2023 global, global summit. So that's why I put it there. But if, if there's another place, I should probably put it. So um, since we have new people, I, I just want to recap. Uh, the executive summary quickly, not go over everything. Uh, 
basically the first half of the executive summary talks about the advancements in cloud computing over the last two decades, um, uh, way beyond our predictions, uh, and the advent of uh, hyperscale computing as defined as at least tens of thousands of systems co-located or geo-distributed in, in a data center environment. Um, so that's kind of the definition of a hyper hyperscale cloud computing environment that we are defining it as. Uh, what we're saying here is uh, these hyperscale environments have their own unique challenges uh, given the scale of operations. Uh, we want to cover those, uh, kind of identify their life cycles. And the paper is supposed to be a case study in, in identifying uh, what challenges each of these phases of life cycle might have, uh, where their, their concrete standardization already exists and where there is opportunity uh, for OCP overall to kind of influence the ecosystem and kind of get to an ecosystem state where we want to, we want to standardize to kind of uh, make things easier, but at the same time provide flexibility to innovate. So we want to walk that fine balance and, and that's the intent um, and and the second half of the paper talks about um, kind of how we can go about doing that. So one of the big challenges with doing that would be kind of given the, the non-monolithic or the heterogeneous kind of configurations of these hyperscale environments where you cannot assume like there is only one storage device, one type of storage device. There could be different types of, even if they are of the same vendor or it could be multiple vendors or storage or compute or graphics or whatever, right? Um, we want to be able to have a unified data model uh, to represent the data center at each level, starting from a device uh, device level to a, sorry, a component level uh, to a system level and then going to a rack scale level and then at the data center level. So we want to create a view a standardized view across these these layers, uh, which can be used across these phases. So, kind of, it's kind of a if you draw a matrix, uh, the the layers are the are the static the 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 layers are the static portion, and then the the phases are the the momentary portions. And we need to be able to kind of have data models that represent each layer across each phases. Um, so that's uh, this paper it kind of talks through a, a example, a, a proposed data model. It's very high level. Uh, it does not go into details of how that can be implemented. Uh, that is something that comes next. Uh, it, it talks about what kind of data could be useful uh, that is collected at specific levels and will provide uh, a greater synergy across the ecosystem. So that's the and then there's a wider call to action for kind of contributing towards this data model. Uh, so that's that's really what the paper is about. Uh, introduction quickly talks about, and stop me anytime if you have any questions. Um, the introduction talks about like statistics and what uh, what is going through that. Um, again, uh, we walk through a f detailed life cycle uh, phases. Again, the intent of this classification is not to is not to kind of create a rigid life cycle uh, that everybody has to follow. It is actually based on the OCP life cycle for, for device and system, of uh, components and systems. Uh, we are just scaling that to a hyperscale. Um, the, the intent actually is to kind of identify gaps in standardization and opportunities for OCP to go and influence or for this group to kind of go and influence, work with different groups or actually start another work stream to address those gaps. So that's that's what the intent is. Uh, whether these stages, they actually apply to a specific, um, a specific unique scenario or not is immaterial. Uh, what's inside the phases should be generic enough. Uh, so there are some sub phases and sub categories identified within each phase. Um, so, yeah, so we can, I can go out, talk to some of these. Um, and and the, the idea is that 
irrespective of whether you have you have a concrete phase defined like that for your unix environment or not uh, the sub stages will apply to you and and i think where this is where we kind of walk through the sub stages so the, the overall overall life cycle is first we plan and design uh, obviously once you have have a plan in place and a design in place you go and procure uh, in infrastructure or whether it's infrastructure whether it's uh, systems whether it's components and then you kind of assemble and deploy and then you kind of majority of the time you're spending in this operate mode where you're where you're kind of maintaining and and kind of watching over the data center and making sure the regular like sparing actions are done uh, inventory is maintained and all that and then at the end of it some whether it's at a system level or whether it's at the data center level at some point you have to plan for decommissioning um it i it i try to focus on both uh, at a like decommissioning few systems out so that the data center stays operational or uh, and at the same time having an ecological environment so that the decommissioning can be done in a very eco friendly way so so that's those are the four stages um let me stop here and see if there are any questions uh i i do have a one remark that ever since we have discussed this um, paper in, in our previous meetings we we introduced two things um first of all we put down the wording of life cycle management in our wiki in our scope for the csm work group and second uh, the last time we met we discussed about making a product out of the fleet management like fleet manageability product uh mm -hmm. not that we are going to develop it end to end ourselves but we are going to set some requirements or some recommendation of how this should be built uh Correct. on like on top of like covering uh ocp systems right and mm -hmm. data centers so um this presents a new opportunity for this white paper to become a teaser or a brochure to the wider things that like the, to the more concrete thing that we would like to build if so okay. and we can like yes we can we could link these two um efforts together and say you know we want to put down in this paper things that would uh, become triggers as to what requirements we want to develop uh in the time to come now yes yes so that's a great point uh, what you want to... so yes so this is where i need help a little bit of help and that's what i want to, to call out is i i have done the basic layout um but uh i think and and i have identified areas that we can potentially focus on right between this and the presentation that we did um but i guess we need maybe not today but at some point um a brainstorm on what areas if any we want to focus on so i'll i'll walk through these areas and then and then based on i think based on that i think that's what you're that's what you're saying is we will we may not be able to focus on everything because that's a herculean task or we may not start with everything so we can we can focus on some of the items and kind of come up with concrete requirements and to put those as teasers into this paper and and then kind of uh, kind of bring that kind of flow into the next thing that we do i i completely agree with that um but yeah that's where i need help a little bit yeah i think there's two or three purpose of this paper right one is we want to align at ocp level when we say life cycle this is a uh, 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 what people can uh, refer to it and say like hey i understand which uh, what is the what part of life cycle i'm going to be operating or uh, touching on or uh, modifying right the second okay. thing is you really need to understand is what is the specific areas we need to say like hey, we need to work on this uh, so there are gaps or uh, it's not an ocp is our proprietary which uh, maybe a list of items uh, right is proprietary that we want to uh, as ocp we need to align and say like out of i don't know 10 proprietary item maybe one or two we want to uh, uh, go on target on or kind of making it as a uh, generic right the third part is 
again we are not uh, signing up uh, but if uh, uh, if any uh, vendors or customers willing to develop a model and uh, uh, trying to make it as available for uh, uh, people to use it or uh, add a service on top of that right <laughs> we need to see who and are interested in uh, uh, developing that model right i it's a nice to have okay Good. All right. All right. Yeah. On on my end, like I would walk backwards from uh, the fleet management super product that we are saying. You know, imagine that we could all sit together and build that fabulous product that solves all the fleet management uh, uh, asks, like uh, requirements, and say, okay, walking back from that uh, product how would we establish and describe the feature of that product, which is lifecycle aware? So if we want to, ad to advertise a, a product that is lifecycle aware, how do we define this lifecycle and what properties sh should, we, should that product have? And this could be described in this white paper. So we can, we can use that like as a fit for thought to, to uh, brainstorm on the paper to yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I guess. I guess we just need to document certain areas that we want to go and focus on, and how we get there is kind of. Yes, we can we can approach it from a top down model or a bottom up approach. I mean, either ways is fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, makes sense. So uh, that's yeah. So thank you for those comments. Um, so then I'll just walk through the some of the, the sub stages of the phases that I've identified. One uh, one. So a few phases of the planning and design will be kind of real estate and construction. So there are, and like I mentioned before, there are a couple of OCP forums that do a great job of, uh, of, uh, of kind of laying down guidelines on how to build an OCP friendly uh, data center. And there are, there are some ready site assessment guidelines also provided, which you can use. Obviously, uh, we need to, we can go deeper into these and figure out Okay, these have these need to be updated for specifically for hyperscale. Um, like you know, probably you need more infrastructure, and as a result, some of these requirements or guidelines need to be updated. So that's one effort that we can pursue. Um, the other effort is around utilities. Um, again, this is where the the carbon modeling and circular life cycle extensions they uh, mod. There is a there's a work stream that is part of the sustainability project, uh, and that's doing a great job of kind of identifying this. They are they are mostly their yeah, goal I think is... before going into that, right? Maybe it'll be good to be put all the. I mean, uh, this uh, paper is not uh, putting it. I, you know, like uh, John put out uh, his way of uh, representing uh, what are the OCP projects, how who's generating what, how is that uh, consumed by others, right? Including that picture, yeah, and, and uh, it. Okay. even calling out all the different OCP projects, uh, right? How that is uh, uh, operating together, and uh, at the end we really need to call out what is still missing pieces, right? Okay, okay. So yeah, sure, uh, I can. But let me ask you this question. Um, yes, I, I I saw your email about that presentation. I, I have that picture. I, I will add it here. Um, but. What I'm trying to understand. You do is... need to tag it with a particular date because new projects getting added to the OCP, are rock streams getting created? So <laughs> yes, you're right. Okay, uh, need to... people will go over is reviewing it. Say that my project, my project is not is there. <laughs> <laughs> need to tag it with a particular. Date. We also have this call for ideas from the OCP right. that I saw, right? Right. Oh, for... Need to, I, and I will try my best to keep it as current as possible. <laughs> uh, because I think what we really need to relate is what is the generic life cycle of a data center plus uh, how is OCP plays into that uh, life cycle, right? Right, 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 right. So that I think yes, that part of the flow is missing. I will add that. Um, makes sense. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and and Scott also. I forgot to mention Scott's here. He's he's been helping me with a lot of these things. So he, we have been kind of tag teaming on this. Uh, but like I said before, if there is anybody willing to help, that would be great as well. Um, yeah, yeah. 
so um okay so i will add that uh, in there um and then yeah just coming back to the flow here um network also has a bunch of uh, utilities i think focusing on on specific items where i think more focus is needed and i was really surprised that um configuration conformance validation um are the are the areas where i, I at least i could not and this is where somebody should check my work um there were some specific areas where like storage work group has some specific areas where they they focus on configurations um and, con and but when it comes to conformance and certification there is no such thing like i i don't know if there is a way to certify something as um uh, and there is an ocp compliance system but there is no standardization or there's no guidelines to kind of certify it so certification is but not there is a ocp ready program right right and as part of the ocp ready you need to do your checklist of items that you have to go through right right it is it's what i meant by certification compliance here conformance here is like kind of a logo program like how, you know how um you have a set of test suites that you can run um and like i think this we were having this conversation in the ocp also where i think anil was the one who brought this up where i think it will be nice to have something like a set of test suites that you can run to kind of mix like today the, it's all about project. there is a project there is a project like tel uh, testing and validation project in ocp oh really i didn't catch yeah. that okay yeah Uh, but I, would, check, I would, right? There is a project for a complaint. Uh, that's another thing. There is yeah. a testing validation. There could be a uh, compliance. But I would be asking the question if Sami knows: uh, Does like the OCP ready regard components and devices, or the whole data center setup, or you know, full rack, a full suite of racks, and so on? Like, how do we scale that readiness? from the component app into the entire data center and My likewise today it is for a yeah. server if you want to contribute to yeah. ocp inspired or ocp ready there is a checklist you have to go through mm -hmm. and uh, call out uh, um, what you are complying with right so does that include the manageability of the server yes yes okay Yeah, there is a OCP profile as part of the hardware management. They need to say that I am compliant with the OCP profile. Okay, okay. so that makes sense. Um, and then when it comes to configuration, obviously, uh, this is where another area where I think a component level or a system level configuration setup is needed. And I, this is where maybe I don't know if you guys are familiar, but I could not find anything on that um, uh, validation. um again this is where we already covered that um so an orchestration and ramp um i think the, another thing that you don't usually from day one start building a data center and on day one all the systems are up and running there is a process of orchestrating and and ramping into it and that is something that is missing today um there are certain onboarding stages you you kind of you and and you what part of x percentage of validation passing uh, should be considered should be a candidate for amp those kind of criteria have to be defined and that's not done today yeah i think that to is it to probably expand on it today there is no cp orchestrator uh, program uh our initiative right okay uh, yeah yeah no program for this right it's a basically a uh, all the different thing is trying to produce a system so it's up to you how do you do use the system right correct correct it how do you bring those things together and how do you use them is up to you <laughs> right now it's yeah. there's no standard yeah. defined yeah, maybe it will be good to call out that and uh, it's a proprietary uh, things right so just to calling out that uh, gets the people uh, to understand together Okay. Yeah, I think that's what I think this is the section where I need to explicitly call out. Okay. Let me let, let let me change it a little bit, right? In okay. practical terms. So, I suppose I suppose the percentage the the exact numbers of what we do call 
a pass or fail in terms of ramping up may be different, maybe a proprietary uh, number setting which its hyperscaler needs to keep to themselves, right? But otherwise, being able to have that in a standardized way so that the vendors can agree and also that we can communicate um, our findings to the vendors and to, let's say, auditors or whatnot, that may be a candidate for an industry-wide solution. Because if we want to uh, confirm or deny to or claim to the vendors that they are giving us or the ODMs to give that they're giving us like uh, they're breaching their uh, SLAs about uh, equipment or we want to confirm to auditors that our equipment is actually working, then that could take some standardization if, if not already right. some platform on that. Completely agree. So I think I think what you're saying is instead of, we're not we're not looking to kind of uh, standardize the the number the, the exact number. yeah. numbers. Yeah, we need a data model representation of yeah. of 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 the of the orchestration. Yeah, uh, I, I'm also thinking that like in terms of accounting, right? Be, we we put able. down in the books, we put down in the books here our books our inventory. And how much of our inventory is active or not, right? In some sense. So, if like financial auditors were to ask us if we have active or dead systems, we should be able to give that in a standardized way that you know external partners can accept. Absolutely. So, I think I think what what we want to standardize is the data model that that can be fed into kind of auditors and ODM component suppliers for, for like you said, uh, for for SLA compliance checks and other things. Okay. Um, all right. Perfect. That that's perfect. I think we agree that that's the intent and that's what's that's the major portion that's missing today. Uh, the other portion that kind of all of these now jumping into the operate model. So when the when the data center is functional, I think there are certain things that that are not, in fact, in this, I think fault detection and repair is the only area that I found where actually a lot of work has been done. Uh, when it comes to utilizations, uh, there is kind of power utilization, specific power utilization efforts that are working, being done. But when it comes to compute utilization uh, and, and, and overall system utilization, um, there is no standard model to represent that. So we don't have to, I guess, again, reiterating what Panos was saying before, we don't have to come up and say, hey, there is, we need to define thresholds and so on and so forth. Uh, what we need to do is kind of have a data model to represent uh, system utilization, component utilization, power utilization. Uh, and, and that needs to be represented at each level, uh, starting at a component level, then at a system level, and at a data center level. So yeah, yes, part of sustainability, Mm -hmm. What we are trying to define is uh, we want to get that uh, uh, defined so that you can calculate uh, a PUE and other things. Yes, you are right. It's not represented today. Uh, we need to get that uh, done. So PEI is for power, right? No, PUE. PUE, PUE is uh, power usage efficiency. Okay, power usage. Okay, power usage. Right. Today, the way it is done is at a data center level, but not at a system level. But not at the system level. And but def and not even at the component level, right? Yeah, you, we are not even having system. Level. <laughs> okay. There, there is work. There is work being done at the component level in the DMTF. Um, and there, there's work uh, <clears throat> for interfaces between components within a given boundary, and then the export uh, of a data model um, that's visible to a remote console. Um, and that's, for those of you who have heard of it, it's, it's a Redfish forum. So, so there are pieces of that work being done at the lower levels, but I agree that much more needs to be done to look at it at a, a, a wide system level. Makes sense. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that, Jim. Um, 
yeah okay so i will make a note of that uh, some of the work at the some of the work at the component level level is being done in the redfish forum okay um sorry yeah. okay john is missing today but he he, he attends that regularly i try to attend it sometimes <laughs> but uh, okay so that's good that's good to know um and we, we just have to kind of I think if you look at all of these things, if you go and try to find examples of something being done somewhere, um, that you'll always find some examples. I think the whole intent behind this paper is to kind of walk down through a method. I mean, the way we do architecture today, right? Uh, there are a lot of architects in this room. What we do is we kind of start with a big problem, right? And, and break it down into smaller and smaller problems and then kind of see how that all these things come together block by block into a bigger picture right i guess the problem today is that there are isolated works we just need to bring them together and and kind of see if they touch together in a in a very cohesive way and 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 that is that is what we need to and again the work that is done at the component level needs to continue i don't think we can we can supplement that or we can take over that uh, but I think we need to figure out how to bring these things together. And if that means giving requirements to some of these sub forums that to go and do more, then that's something we need to go and do. Is that's that's the idea behind this. Yeah, I think uh, the one thing you also we should highlight, uh, maybe I don't know whether there should be some metrics or uh, uh, that reach base that a data center customer uh, need to consume or they are expecting to be uh, um, get it ready um, i'm going kind of blank here right if i'm like okay. let's say if i'm a, a design phase body that they need right what's the input yes. and the output right so, what are the input or output for uh, each phase right okay. that's a good point if I'm there is a that. way to kind of represent that and uh, make sure that uh, at OCP is contributing these uh, uh, metrics or these inputs uh, and uh, these outputs, and there are uh, pieces that is going to be exercised for the data center uh, person who's going to go and do the extra things, right? Then it will be clear, right? A, are we aligning all this input, output, and uh, uh, what are the missing pieces? Absolutely. So that's great. Um, so I think, Sammy, do you mean we should do the work of kind of defining those input outputs? Um, or and at least to this paper, right? Um, okay. May, may be complete, uh, but at least you need to provide that uh, concept of uh, uh, you have the picture of uh, each phase is going to the next phase, right? But right. I think if you, uh, somebody is asking the question, what is the input for the space? Maybe at least a, uh, at a high level. template of what is that uh, we are expecting. It's not complete. Maybe uh, another group can go and define this completeness, right? OK, OK, that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe if that makes sense, right? No, yeah, that, that does make sense. Um, I, I, I will have to think through how, at what level we do that. Um, again, I, I think this is where I think the problem with doing that, again, is the feedback that I keep getting on the phases is, hey, some of these phases, some of these things are we are doing and not in this phase, but then that phase. Some of these phases don't apply to me, you know. So if we were to define a concrete set of input outputs for each phases, that will harden the life cycle, which I was trying to avoid. But and you can uh, have it like a uh, red phase, right? It's a lot of, everything is optional. If it is available, what is that? things have it <laughs> okay okay yeah that makes sense so it's not it's not a mandatory thing but it's it's okay Got it's it. attributes it's Is something that, things to consider when you are looking at a data center level do we have those attributes available they can decide which phase they want to add it right maybe uh upgrade or design or uh, it's however they want to bring their systems in right may or may not apply okay so okay okay so the way i think you are referring this is we, it's just a checklist of things to consider. Right. Uh, attributes may or may not apply, but we just need to consider. I mean, a data center 
planner or operator may consider those things. Okay, God, makes sense. Um, yeah, and so that's, I, I talked about fault detection. I think that's something that we, and even in our work group, that's been done very heavily. And I think some of the feedback we have already given to them. And so they have, that's, and that's working, work in progress already. So that's great. Uh, coming into servicing. So, so maybe even going there, right? He's asking the fault management uh, stream, right? Hey, do they have a, a summary? Or even <laughs> that brings another point. Maybe asking every single OCP projects, do they have a summary of uh, <laughs> their input output or something like that, right? What are the gaps? Let, let, me, let me throw a big rock here. So <laughs> uh, I was thinking out loud how let's say we take one measure which would be the power usage uh, efficiency or even the uh, return of investment of some assets like some servers and then or you know the uh, the amount of power they would draw and if you find if you try to go down the rabbit hole of reasons why an asset is not drawing power or is not being effective on a payload, you may say that it's not provisioned yet, it's not, uh, it's not on the inventory phase correctly, or is idling because there is no payload, or is broken. And then uh, fault management kicks in. And I would drill it down to say, is it at fault, at a certain fault, or is it a suspected fault or is it reserved for failure analysis? So, you know, their input, their interface should come and integrate with a management tool that considers the difference for, from something which is broken and agreed for RMA versus something which is at a suspected fault and we have proactively taken that out of production. All this should be reflected but because at the end of the day, they skew the numbers of the efficiency and uh, uh, TCO or return of investment or whatnot, right? So right. I think we, we stand at that interface where we want the numbers to be properly modeled. We will not ask fault management whether they're doing their job correctly and flagging the hosts properly because that's their job. But our job is to ask for that model and bring it in a system that we can uh, explain to our customers, to our investors, to our engineers, how many systems are active, say. Makes sense, yeah. I, I I I agree that that's the intent, right? I mean, is to you're right. I mean, instead of you're right. So instead of having a input output kind of uh, because it it kind of leads to a waterfall assumption, like one thing has to end before the other thing starts. Um, instead of having it like having a dependency model might be uh, like you, you're right. So fault detection. Uh, for utilization failure depends on the utilization information, a model representation. So there is a clear dependency between the two um, in that specific scenario, right? There might be other scenarios where like um, an error occurrence is kind of a detection of fault and that has nothing to do with utilization. It, the system might be sitting idle, but there is an error, so, right? So, so that, that but, but you're right, there is one dependency across this uh, where utilization can feed into fault detection. If the utilization go, goes down, there's probably something wrong. And then you can drill into why it's why that is wrong and figure out if there is a fault somewhere. Um, absolutely agree. Um, so maybe if, Sammy, you're OK, I, I also agree that maybe instead of looking at it from an input-output perspective, maybe we look at it from a dependency perspective. Yeah, that's fine. Some, okay. some basically, we need to say, like, there is a data coming in and going out of the thing, right? Correct. What are the requirements? Maybe instead of calling input, right? It may be requ requirements, yeah. I would call it an integration problem. How does a fault management module integrate with an inventory module and integrate with a power efficiency um, calculator or let's say, um, 
green calculator, like you know, carbon emissions calculator, how all these things interface with each other and can give us better data than just calculating generic envelopes and you know, a maximum thresholds or whatnot. Makes sense. I think I like I like that. I like that a lot. Thanks for the collaborative. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Um, how these things integrate with each other. Uh, to provide a system model, yes, a system model of representation and right, a detailed perfect. and accurate and detailed and accurate calculations of costs, efficiency, utilization, uh, fault rates, and whatnot. Of utilize. Oh, so yeah, yeah. I think I think we do need to define the metric, and once we define the metric, uh, those. I, I guess like what PUE is doing, it's kind of trying to define this is the matrix for power utilization. Um, um, so that once we define that matrix, um, the the dependencies will be clear, and based on those dependencies, I, I guess the accurate the accuracy should follow through that, right? Is that is that fair or or should that be a separate consideration? No, no, I think it's each problem will go and have a different thing, yes. right? At least okay. we are trying to up level it, right? Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, that makes sense. Um, accurate calculation of how to do this. Okay. All right. So I put that as a comment in there. Yeah. Right. In uh, the whole paper, we never talk about uh, uh, the cost or uh, what do you call a uh, TCO uh, or anything, right? Is there anything that we should be highlighting or? Uh, or at least we want to say that we are not really like talking about it, at least put a wedding or something like that. We are not going to talk about TCO. And um, this is my, okay, this is no, my, no, no. <laughs> uh, the, the reason why we don't, we cannot address TCO is because I think that goes into that proprietary realm of. No, no, no. Uh, I think what I'm saying is as a life cycle, it go that they will be considering, right? Sure. You, there's no probably recommendation, but uh, you can decide. I need to have a lot, per, a lot of performance. I don't care about uh, cost, right? Right. How or I may variables. want to get a lower thing, right? So it all depends on how you. Or how at you least, want to, yeah. What problem you're trying to optimize? Right? Yeah, makes sense. Um, and that, that's what I meant is, we can provide the inputs to that calculation, but how that calculation should be done, I guess that's what I wanted to brainstorm as well. Is my my two senses that that might go into that proprietary limb because what you're trying to optimize, you may not be trying to optimize power. You might be trying to optimize performance. And so knowing, having a tool to represent power or having a matrix to represent power is great, but doesn't mean that that needs to be optimal. Uh, right. so, so I guess how that feeds into that optimization, optimization and that modeling, machine learning modeling of how, how these things work, that I have kept it as a black box uh, and I will call that out. So yeah, I think what I'm saying is whatever we are not uh, addressing it, we call it out. Maybe yes. in a general uh, thing, right? What are the right. things we are not planning to address? Okay, we should It's just not for out. servicing person. I think it's probably the overall. Yeah, yeah. Number, right? yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I just, I'm writing it down so I don't forget, but I'll move the comment. Yeah, we are not going to address some of the things. We should call them out. Call them out in the introduction. Example, TCO optimizations and other optimizations. Yeah, what is in scope or out of scope for this paper? Makes sense. I think that's a good point. What is, what is in scope and out of scope? For the whole paper. Thank you for that feedback. It's great. So jumping into servicing um, again, this is one another area where um, today I guess there's no unique way to represent software or firmware or or hardware. Um, it's what you have right now uh, from from an inventory management and how you can service it uh, in the sense of if I know the software version, I, I need to be able to figure out what is the next version available whether that is kind of meeting a quality mark uh, and how do I go about updating that. All that needs to be represented. And today that is, at least I could not find a, a, rep, 
a a work group that was focusing on this part, this aspect inventory yeah, management yeah i think uh, you sure. probably want to say ocp's focus is uh, that uh, whatever a uh, lot of work going on is uh, fleet management right mm-hmm. it's more of a hardware side of it but how you schedule your software and other things so it's uh, probably out of scope on the things right so maybe giving a clarity like a hey, servicing involves multiple things but what is ocp is uh, trying to do is the hardware hardware management person and uh, that yeah, especially when you say hardware management are we able to update the from where are we able to query whatever the things are are we able to get a telemetry right all those things need to be available right as part of the ocp work uh, I, I would dare to say that we already have very standard and industry-wide, not, not OCP necessarily, but even like, you know, in the Linux community, open source, or in other um, contexts like uh, DMDF, uh, we have ways to service our hardware, ways to address our hardware, but we may be lacking the models right. and the standard term definition of what it means to service or uh, what phase is a hardware when it's getting serviced. And these standard models are the interface to our inventory management or let's say upgrades management or something that we don't have at that scale. Right, right. No, yeah, again, <laughs> you're right. Absolutely yeah. right. Our focus is data from a manageability perspective. We cannot focus on the mechanics of updates. Uh, we have to focus on the representation and and like you you need to before you can update you need to know what version is on there right so um, that is our focus should be basically on representation and and that that's what this paper should focus on i, I I'm, i'm sammy you're okay with that as well yeah yeah i think that panas has a good point right i think what we are not focusing here is what os you are running what software you are running right right what you are really like uh, focusing a lot of things is uh, can i get a hardware uh ready and if uh, runs to problem can you service it all kind of uh, those kind of areas right yeah yeah so i think the data then, uh, but at yeah, the end of the day hardware side goes out of scope correct then hardware side need to be in scope right yeah yeah that, that, no i agree fleet management probably is covering the hardware representation and the and i i need to check that out uh, but uh, yeah i will i will confirm that um and so that might be something that the hardware f- aspect of this is already covered the software aspect of it just needs to be covered and this is where we'll focus on makes sense yeah i think that's what i'm saying orchestration itself uh, kind of uh, at a high level two buckets right hardware management orchestration plus uh, software uh, scheduling and uh, work- workflow deployment things like that right that's totally different right makes sense and and the last part of uh, operate is inventory management uh again like fleet management might be covering specific hardware focused uh, uh things uh so i need to just go and look at that and see if that is enough and if anybody wants to help me with this that would be great because i'm not familiar with fleet management as much uh so yeah um this is one area where i i could use some help so let me know um yeah and then the, i think i ran out of time so we can cover the decommissioning later and then i can cover the data models um and and this is where i try to kind of represent the dependencies like i think one of the things that we already talked about is utilization can feed into um feed into fault fault actions so i think there needs to be an arrow going through here to here and maybe it's represented some that's that's how i was thinking of representing it like through a kind of a dependency chart um but we can we can go over that in in the later sessions again and i will i will start working on these comments that we have so far uh, scott any sorry you didn't get a chance to talk anything you want to add no i'm i'm i've been listening and uh looking forward to work on this outside of the <laughs> outside of the meeting to get some you know get some traction i think one thing that's interesting when you mentioned though about the some folks getting wrapped up we do this in this phase and you do that in that phase that that's got to that's got to come up but also i think that it was interesting is that at the fundamental when we get to the bottom of it 
the data model, the data that we're looking at is is always the same, or it's very common, if you will. Even like fault data, right? In any of those phases, you're going to always look at analyze fault data and say, are we, you know, it's are we going to live with this fault? So are we are like, you know, and when you deploy it, it's like your RMA parts or whatever. There's you're looking at fault data. The action you take on it is different. If you're in a deployment phase, or if you're in a validation phase, or early on, you know, development, you'd be like, well. Are these all faults we know about? Is this a new thing? Is this something that we, uh, you know, can live with, or do we do we hold back? You know, rolling this out because of these problems, right? Right, right. Absolutely. That, that's, a, that's a great example. Maybe we should put that example in there in the paper, saying, "Hey." And, and I think it's true. It yeah, and it goes back to in inventory too, right? I mean, I think I don't you know. We're not. I think I think it was great comments about you know trying to point at redfish and things. I mean, I, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, but there's we want to build on top of all that stuff and uh, inventory too. It's it's usable across all the phases. <laughs> so uh, for different reasons. So yeah, I think it I think this is a this is gonna be an awesome uh, effort. And okay. I think I think we're running out of time. So I'll I'll hand up hand it back. Yeah. Uh I, I suppose I suppose we could mark this discussion for follow up next week. We can do that because I believe there is yeah. a lot of material, and we're coming to things that may be useful beyond this white paper. Right, right. I think it yeah. probably needs a few more sessions, uh, mm -hmm. but I think it'll be good. All the feedback that you got, Nirav, to kind of integrate and get that ready. Then yes, yes, we, we can, can keep refining. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for all the feedback. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nero. Thank you, others too. Thank you all. Okay. Bye, team.